So how do we lower sex hormone binding globulin to increase free testosterone? That is what we'll uncover in today's video. And so what I'll do is take a deep dive into sex hormone binding globulin, which is a blood test that can actually indicate how much of our free testosterone is available in the human body. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas, the founder of Boost Your Biology. If you've been enjoying these videos, please like the video and hit subscribe down below to stay up to date with the latest and greatest health research. So what is sex hormone binding globulin? Well, SHBG binds to and carries testosterone and less strongly E2 and DHT or estradiol and dihydrotestosterone through the bloodstream to target tissues and to the liver for modification and removal from the body. Now, this bond is very strong and that the bound testosterone is not easily removed from the SHBG and is therefore considered inactive. So as far as production sites, SHBG is produced mostly in the liver, the testes, and the brain. Now, production signals or stimuluses or signals to actually increase the production of SHBG include estrogen or estradiol and triiodothyronine or a thyroid T3, so T3 thyroid hormone. In addition, what we need to understand is that SHBG is actually down-regulated by insulin. What are commonly used ways currently for men to lower SHBG? This is what you'll find in a range of videos online on YouTube. Here are some strategies that have oftentimes been recommended to lower SHBG. Number one is by increasing carbohydrate intake. A number of men that go on a keto or carnivore diet eliminating carbohydrates actually notice in their blood work that it raises sex hormone binding globulin. And this is why I'm a big proponent of actually increasing carbohydrates significantly if we're trying to maximize free testosterone production and levels and availability in the body. In addition, protein intake is negatively correlated with SHBG, meaning that meat eaters tend to have a much lower sex hormone binding globulin than vegetarians. As we can see, next up, we have boron. Now, boron at a dosage of around 10 milligrams per day can actually lower sex hormone binding globulin. Tonkata Lee is a herbal supplement that is known to lower SHBG. We have magnesium, nettle root, vitamin D, zinc, and also fructose consumption. So these are various strategies to lower SHBG. So is low SHBG always a good thing? Well, chronically low SHBG can actually be indicative of conditions such as obesity, hypothyroidism, Cushing's disease, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, the worst thing, however, is that men with very low levels of SHBG are literally wasting testosterone. Now, Dr. Chrysler explains in further detail. The real problem with low SHBG is that sometimes the patient can tolerate low levels of estrogen because so much of it will be free. And also, the patient tends to be what we call a hyper excreter, which means that he excretes a lot of testosterone in his urine. Now, for guys with lower levels of SHBG, when comparing their blood testosterone to their urine testosterone, the urine will be way higher and the kidneys can excrete extra testosterone in the urine, but they don't excrete more estrogen in the same way. So guys with lower SHBG and therefore a higher percentage of free testosterone or after a concentrated dosage of testosterone, are basically leaving the testosterone in the urine. Hey guys, if you're watching this video right now and want to unlock your full mental and physical potential, then the Limitless course is for you. Unlock my best biohacks for energy, motivation, and testosterone optimization so that you can conquer your goals with ease and crush every day with confidence. Click the link in the description and get it now for only $27 today. All right, now let's get straight back into the video. Bear in mind, there are various drugs that are known to actually raise sex hormone binding globulin. Now, drugs that raise SHBG include, and this is via usually via increasing prolactin. Now, we're looking at antipsychotics, both typical and atypical, antidepressants such as SSRIs, tricyclics, MAUIs, Xanax and Buspar, H2 or histamine 2 antagonists such as simitidine and ranitidine, morphine, and some other antihypertensives. So these drugs are known to raise SHBG. In addition, we can see other drugs here that are known to raise sex hormone binding globulin. We have raloxifene, tamoxifen, spironolactone, uh, anticonvulsants, oral uh, but not transdermal estrogen, ethanol estradiol, which is oral contraceptives, and also metformin. 
Now, obviously the contraceptives there are relevant to women. In addition, we can see that other compounds that can actually lower or suppress SHBG include progestins, glucocorticoids, and exogenous insulin in type one diabetics. So here's a hidden way to lower SHBG that not many men are probably familiar with, and that is via decreasing iron overload in the liver. Now, many of you probably know about iron in the context of energy levels and um, improving red blood cell functioning. Now we can see this study was titled, liver iron overload is associated with elevated SHBG concentration and moderate hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism in dysmetabolic men without genetic hemochromatosis. And what they noted in this particular study was that hypogonadism is not infrequent in men with dysmetabolic iron overload syndrome. Liver iron excess is associated with an increased plasma SHBG and moderate hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. Now, phlebotomy or donating blood which is something that I recommend to a lot of my clients, actually donating blood is beneficial not only for the receiver, but also for the, um, the giver. And this is another example of how donating blood can actually be beneficial by lowering iron levels in the body and reducing iron overload. And it's in fact a very important strategy for those who have hemochromatosis. And they're noting here is that Phlebotomy therapy needs further investigation in symptomatic hypogonadal men with dysmetabolic iron excess. So what is the major takeaway here? Well, the major point that I'm trying to emphasize is that we need to be looking outside the box as it pertains to boosting testosterone and optimizing overall human health. And in this particular case, one way to do so is by ensuring that we get a blood test done for iron and some of the iron parameters and other um, iron markers. So this is why getting a blood test is abso absolutely essential to determine our overall health. And so how do we actually assess iron levels? Well, the only way to do it that I know of and probably the most effective way is via doing a blood test. Now, usually an iron blood test includes serum iron, transferrin, trans iron binding capacity, and also ferritin. So we need to be assessing all of these different iron parameters and markers. Now you're probably wondering, are there any genetic factors associated with elevated SHBG or low levels of SHBG? Now there are several variations in the SHBG gene that are associated with increased or decreased blood levels of the protein and are linked to different conditions. Now, this is credit to self-decode Joe Cohen. This data and this information here is actually credit to self-decode. All right, so looking at the first one, we have the RS6257 variant reduces blood SHBG levels and is associated with breast cancer in women and type two diabetes in both men and women. The next one, the presence of RS6258 variant reduces the affinity of SHBG for testosterone and is associated with higher levels of free testosterone. The RS6529 variant increases SHBG levels by reducing its elimination and has been associated with a lower frequency of breast and uterine cancer in women, low sperm movement in, in men, and lower incidence of type two diabetes in both men and women. Now, RS1799941 increases blood SHBG levels and has been associated with a higher bone density and lower sperm quality in men and a lower incidence of type two diabetes in both men and women. So if you actually wanna do a genetic test to see whether or not you have these um, different polymorphisms and things like that, you can actually check that out at Self Decode. They've got some great insights over there. So here are some risky ways that some men are actually deciding to lower their SHBG. Number one, we have proviron, which is a steroid derivative of dihydrotestosterone. These are usually not recommended. Next up, we have oxandrolone or anavar, which is an anabolic steroid that has been shown to lower SHBG. But again, anavar does come with various side effects and is potentially toxic to the human body. And then finally, we have SARMs or selective androgen receptor modulators. Again, these are known to lower SHBG, but are generally not recommended. So what about caffeine? Well, regular coffee intake was linked to increased blood SHBG in multiple studies on 19,000 people. Now, different types of caffeinated beverages such as coffee, green tea, black tea, oolong tea, and cola were linked to increased SHBG levels in 50 women. So hopefully in this video, you've established that it is absolutely imperative 
to get your blood work done. And this is really important to do if we're trying to boost overall uh, human performance and body composition and things like that. So this is one reason why assessing your iron levels can potentially be a hidden reason why your SHBG levels are so high. So don't forget to do routine blood work every six months or so to keep an eye on your iron levels and obviously SHBG as it pertains to optimizing free testosterone. So thanks everyone for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.